Hey, what's going on everybody? So before we cut to the actual video here, I wanted to take a couple minutes to discuss something. So this video was actually shot with Brian a few weeks ago now here. This was kind of before news broke from Brian personally about the state of his health. I'm not going to get into depth about that because if you want to know what's going on, definitely go check out his videos. That's his piece to discuss, not mine. I will warn you, it is some pretty heavy stuff. And I've noticed that even just from watching those videos personally, as well as talking to him, I mean, it's definitely some heavy stuff for sure. And I feel for you, Brian. I feel for anyone in his family, crew, everyone that knows him like I do. I mean, it's, it's definitely hard to see someone who has given so much and just has such a drive for life and for his passions to definitely be hurting like he is right now. It's definitely something very hard to see and I would never wish upon anyone. It's very hard to see. But like I said, this video was actually shot a few weeks back and I appreciate Brian for taking the time to do this video with me because I know that we were in a bind for time. The man's always busy. Totally get that as someone with a crazy schedule myself. Always on the go, always driven. And I love that about him. He's great. He always is something that inspires me with that drive about him. And I just want wanted you guys to make sure that you guys really listen to what he's saying and really feel that energy in him. He is so goal oriented, so driven, so passionate. You can just feel it. I mean, just being in there, I mean, I was just enthralled just listening to him. I always am. It's really something that's inspiring. It's infectious. So hopefully that happens to you guys as well. But like I said, this is a call to action for everyone in the animal community. I want everyone to come together and rally in support for Brian. He's done so much outreach, so much work just for us and really just been a trailblazer in the industry in terms of what we can do nowadays in terms of how we can bring in outreach how we can bring in passion and drive make new animal lovers reptile lovers anyone so like i said with everything that brian has done for the community it's time for the community to give back to brian in a tremendous way he definitely needs our support now more than ever and brian you know i'm in your corner no matter what buddy hashtag brian strong i love that down below there's going to be some links in the description for his personal GoFundMes that he has made months ago for his reptarium slash aquarium that he is currently building. So if you have the means, maybe check those out down below, along with his other social media links, his YouTube and other social media platform. And on those platforms, really right now more than ever, Brian just needs to know that you're there for him, you're in his corner, just show your love and support and appreciation for him. And at a bare minimum, if you can just express that to him, your words matter. I'm telling you right now more than ever, no one wants to go in this fight alone. And I'm telling you, Brian, you are not alone. You have the whole reptile army as as well as the whole animal community behind you, I promise you. You have my support and everyone else's as well too. So lastly, let me leave you with this. So with, throughout my time of knowing Brian, I have always known him to be a strong individual. And he has beaten a tremendous amount of odds throughout his life, and this time will be no different. You got this, Brian, and we got you. So like I said, definitely check those links down below. Whatever you can do to show your support and appreciation for Brian, and just tell him that you care would mean the world to him. I promise you guys. So like I said, Brian, we're in your corner. Brian's strong. So now all I ask of you guys is to sit back, relax, and become inspired with how Brian's dreams became reality. Thanks again, Brian. So I am here at the Reptarium in Utica, Michigan. We're about to go inside and meet up with Brian Barczak, who actually runs and owns this Reptarium. And what we're going to be doing today is we're actually going to hear his side of the story of how he started the Reptarium, where it's at right now, and where it's going. So you don't want to miss this video. It's going to be a lot of fun with a bunch of cool animals. So stick around. My name is Nick Pulaski. Growing up, I have always had a passion for wildlife. And with that passion, along with my passion of filmmaking, I get taken on some amazing adventures creating wildlife content, getting up close with a variety of incredible animals. So come follow along as I pursue my goals of educating, inspiring, exploring, and conserving wildlife, all while having fun, seeing the beauty in our natural world. All right, so a man that needs no introduction, you guys know Brian Barczyk. Definitely go check him out. If you guys don't know, he runs this incredible zoo out in Utica, Michigan, the Reptarium. Just an incredible place along with BHB reptiles as well too so definitely check him out if you guys don't know him already Brian thank you so much for oh, having thanks, me brother I appreciate it you're great. always great to come yeah. here brother no this has been awesome as you guys can see also too my hair is a little bit shorter we're gonna leave that to his video so go check that out if you guys haven't seen that that was probably posted about a week or so ago so definitely go check that out it, it's a little bit humiliating but you know what I definitely needed it we're gonna keep off topic of that Brian what we're going to be doing today is I just want to hear basically your insight because a lot of people come in here they tour around 
background. Yeah. I just want to hear kind of like how it started for you, where it is now, and then how it's going to be like for your future. So I just want to kind of hear like how it started in Reptaria 1.0. Yeah, so this is the 1.0, and, and we actually moved into the first part of the building with BHD about eight years ago. This building was actually uh, a tobacco shop, and then the next building, which was 2.0, was actually empty at the time. Okay. You know? uh, so, so when we moved in next door, we're just breeding steaks at BHD. Sure. But the vision, ever since I was young, was like eventually to open up some sort of reptile zoo. I mean, right. that's what I wanted to do. And I always knew that if an opportunity arose that I was going to do it at this space. The tobacco shop moved across the street. This, nice. this came, this one unit came, well, both units were available, but this one came available. I went ahead and took it. So again, you know, I talked to a lot of my financial friends and everyone said that opening up a reptile zoo was kind of a stupid thing to do and that <laughs> you're never going to make money. And, it's a big leap. Uh, it, it was a big leap, you know, going from like being breeding snakes my whole life to, to doing an educational kind of thing it, it was hard so I, I spent you know a lot of money built the zoo we opened up september 13th i believe it was in 2018 from the moment we woke open up i mean there was like 200 people in line waiting to get in and, and that was before covid so like we had a full on just anyone could come in and i remember just, seeing pictures it was like wall-to-wall -wall people i mean here. literally like on a saturday night dude it would literally within 10 minutes of opening yeah. you couldn't walk oh i believe that. you literally couldn't walk i mean yeah. it was like like this There'd yeah be, just in this section alone right and this is a big section too yeah, this is no just joke in this section alone we'd have 200 people in here. oh my god just in this section not that section yeah. here so so we ran that for about a year and a half you know the, the rep here in 1.0 and, and we just again we're doing so well we and, and listen i fell in love with it i fell in love with the whole process of having yeah. people sharing with stuff doing private tours doing private events doing all kinds of stuff like that. And of course, we ended up going, you know, across here. We said this building was available, so we took it So this over. wall was actually here. So there was a wall right here. As a matter of fact, there used to be a TV on this wall right Get here. Get out. That's our, you know, <laughs> and we used to do movie nights here. Oh, yeah, okay. one point oh. So we just put a bunch of, like, chairs here. People come in after. We'd watch, like, you know, like Anaconda, the movie, and stuff like that. Fitting. We ended up tearing this wall out, just this opening here. And we did 2.0. Well, we started it in 2019 okay. uh, and worked on it all the way through March of 2020. Wow. And then March of 2020, we opened on March 13th, 2020, and we added all the new enclosures. Now, the thing that we really saw from this side to this side is that yeah. we wanted to have like bigger enclosures, more glass, more viewing, you know. So that was you know, a big goal. That was like, yeah, because we, we kind of learned that the smaller enclosures are cool, and you need small enclosures sure. for the smaller animals. Sure. But, you know, instead of having 50 small enclosures, I'd rather have 10 big enclosures, Makes really sense. impressive enclosures. So we did, you know, Diddy and Dixie, this giant enclosure here. We did Anaconda with this giant enclosure here. Which is impressive. Yeah. Like, when you walk through these doors, like, your eye immediately draws here. Yeah, like, what's in here? Because what's, yeah. you can hardly see what's in here because she, one, blends in so perfectly, yeah. and two, it's so huge yeah. that for a giant Anaconda like her, how big is she? She's 12 foot now. She's yeah. about 145 pounds. Yeah. Uh, one day, she gets up to 300 pounds. Easily. You know? So that was the whole idea was to do that. And, of course, we all know what happened. In, in March of 2020, sure. yep. uh, literally, the dark you know, ages. We, yeah, we opened up March 13th. <laughs> and this is when things were the rumblings of COVID were starting pretty heavy, and, sure. and things were getting pretty serious. And we literally had people from all over the country show up. We had 1,200 people in the building. This, these two sides over Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I mean, just packed with people. It was a great party. Right. It was, it was really crazy because we were doing like events in the morning, like sure. private tours, events in the morning. Then we're doing open hours. Uh, I think we did 12 to 9 at that point because we wanted wow. longer open hours. Yeah. And then we're doing 9 o'clock till midnight VIP party afterwards. Jeez. And so, so we so had a fully booked schedule night and day. It was like, yeah, so Friday, Saturday, Sunday, crushed with business, crushed yeah. with everything. And then literally Monday morning, they shut everything down. They shut. So we were open three days and we were shut down for four and a half months. So what was that like for you? Like, what did you feel in that moment? And honestly, you know, the first, at the first moment, so I got my crew together, literally standing right in the spot we're at right now. And I told my crew, number one, no one's going to miss one hour of work. I said, you know, I'm not laying anyone off. I'm not doing anything. I said, yeah. but, and it wasn't a mandatory shutdown Monday. Sure. But I was like, hey, things are coming. Let's shut down for a couple weeks. Remember, two weeks going to curve. The curve's going to yeah. flatten and stuff like that. So for the next couple weeks, we're going to close. And I think by Wednesday, it became mandatory. Gotcha. So I was like a couple days ahead of the curve as far as shutting down. That two weeks at first were like, oh, it gives us a break. You know, yeah. it was so crazy building the place out. And then yeah. a crazy weekend. I thought having a couple weeks off is actually going to be nice. You yeah. know, so whatever. But then that two weeks turned into a month, turned into two months, turned yeah. into three months. 
and it was devastating. You and know? it's a lot different than like a clothing store, right? I mean, these animals need to be fed, well maintained, everything. Yeah, like that. I mean, it's a our full costs thing. don't go down. I mean, no. you know, it's, it, we still have the same amount of feed, the same amount of electricity, the same amount of care. So it costs the same if we're open or not open. Financially, we were fine. We were right. completely fine. Things went really well because. BHB was crushing, YouTube was crushing, you know, a bunch of stuff was going well. But it was tough to, you know, what, what happened was after a couple of weeks, not having people in here yeah. started to really mentally mess with me, say, you know, yeah. because just not seeing those faces and not knowing when or if we're going to ever open up right. again, you know. This because, is your home away from home. Yeah. So, like, not seeing a lot of people come in and everything like that. And crazy. looking outside and the roads are bare, too, yeah, you know. The roads I mean, were, I mean it was, it, yeah, there was no one on the road. It was eerie. The animals were, weren't used to it either, you know. I, I started seeing changes in the animals. It's true. Because they're so used to being handled and interacting with. And all of a sudden, now it was more like we were doing as much handling as we could. You but, probably had to up it. Yeah, we all oh, buy a ton. We, yeah. we were spending tons of time handling stuff, but still, you could see they were more food motivated gotcha. because they were more getting fed more than getting handled. And so it was an interesting thing to see the animals kind of change over. It, yeah. And uh, and even when we opened up four and a half months later, and we could only have ten people. That was the maximum. You could yeah. have ten people. So we we went to the hourly from wide open. Anyone could come. We went to hourly rate, and we had ten people an hour. And, and number one, it was so amazing to have those ten people back. But the first weekend, I remember the animals acting really weird. Like we had yeah. to keep a much closer eye because they weren't used <laughs> to it. By the weekend two or three, we had up to 25 people. Nice. The, the regulations changed to yeah. 25 people. And, and then the animals got right back into the groove of things, which was really good. And then shortly thereafter, it went to 50% occupancy. And we really, even though there's no regulation now, we realized that 50 people in here is better than 200 people. It's better to have there. a more intimate setting where yeah, so people can ask their questions freely. Yeah. It's not just piling over each other, talking over each other, everything oh, like yeah, that. Yeah, just being packed, you know, shoulder to shoulder. So yeah. that's the way we kept it. And so for two years, this has been, you know, a little over two years, this has been going, well, no, I guess it's coming up on two years now that this has been open. And now, of course, I can go 3.0. I see that, which is right across the yeah, street. The building right across the street. So that used to be like a shop. So like, what were, that, I mean, your plans were to build up originally right originally right. we were going to build a second floor on this building yeah because we wanted to add an aquarium and some other which is a huge plus, undertaking plus we knew like salt and pepper for instance you guys yeah. can follow me like salt and pepper were getting really big right right and we knew they couldn't stay in here for long you know they're, they're getting to the, as a matter of fact they're too big for a cow sure know? they really are they, they should be in something larger now absolutely so we knew we needed to build something bigger so initially we're like all right we'll build upstairs well the animals that need bigger enclosures will move into enclosures upstairs and then we'll build an aquarium too to kind of something else. So we had all the drawings done, we had architecture done, stuff like that. And and it was never ideal. The biggest problem was is that it was gonna cost a lot for structure. Sure. You know, you know, when people think putting an aquarium upstairs, you know, I mean you have to have a lot of steel for reinforcement and stuff like that. Right. That's a huge and, um, undertaking. So yeah, huge undertaking. I remember standing in the front of the building one night we were open and I saw the people that was it was a thrift store. It used to be a grocery store, oh, okay. then it turned into a thrift store for like 10 years huh. and I, I saw them go out and literally like put a we're moving sign up. Oh man. And I was like, <laughs> and, and like I said, we hadn't started construction, but we already had bids on the press. We, you know, we it's were a in sign. the press and I was like, stop everything. Let's look Let's across talk. the street. Cause I mean, it has better parking. We don't have to have a second floor. It was actually even more room, even with going upstairs, we're going to still have about 25% more room across the street. Wow. So we said, you know what? Let's go ahead and look at that. We, we, Within a matter of days, we got in touch with the owner. We started talking to him. We had a deal done within about a week. We had a deal kind of done. It took a while to get done, sure. done but we had an agreement within a week. Now we're looking at, I keep saying October 8th is, is gonna be the uh, the opening day, of the new aquarium slash reptarium. And so with any luck, that's what'll happen. But yeah, so I mean, the dream is kind of went from you know, let's start a small reptile zoo, let's expand the reptile zoo, and now let's make something really much, much bigger and yeah. much more grand. I mean, we're talking millions and millions of dollars. No kidding. You know, I mean, yeah, we're looking well, at, you know. It's basically coming out of you. So, I mean. It's kind of, I mean, every dollar I have, I'm spending every dollar I have. Yeah, you know, I, it's, it's never been about the money. It's so, I, I, if you ask me, like, Brian, you could have $4 million or you could have a really cool place. I'm going to say I'll take the really cool animal place. Right. You know what I mean? And that's what we're doing. It's a lot of work. We're, we're already, demolition is completely done now. Within, I think next week, we're going to pour footings for the front facade. Within about two more weeks of that, we'll have the steel starting to go up. And hopefully within a, a couple months, we'll have the whole front facade done. Nice. And then we're starting to work on the interior of the building. We've got to trench floors for drains. We've got a, I mean, we've got a lot of work, you know, obviously a ton of electrical, a ton of HVAC. You know, and then, then of course, in about, I'm going down to Texas in about two weeks cool. to start the, the actual reptile enclosures. 
you know, start getting that going, and we'll do that over the next you know three, four months, probably building all the reptile enclosures, and then the fish start coming in. Probably, I'm hoping we'll start putting tanks in maybe uh, by June. Okay. And and I'm hoping water by the end of July. Water That's will exciting. be in. So. So I have to ask too, like, why fish? Like, what made you go? Like, you have all these reptiles. You've yeah. been known as the reptile guy. Why? What made you switch over to fish? Well, you know, I've always loved fish. I mean, ever when I when I started my career, you know, in a pet shop, I, I was a fish store. Okay. And, and so this fish store with a little tiny reptile section. I took care of the reptile section, but I also took care of the fish. I am by far not a fish expert, but I've always loved fish. Gotcha. I've always been passionate about fish. At one point I had like 18 fish tanks in my house. So it was always something that I thought of doing. Yeah. And then I think the other thing is, is that, you know, when you really think about reaching people, which is also my goal, my yes. goal in life is to reach people in particular to try to get them to love reptiles. Yeah. That means you have to expose them. Now here at the Reptarium, People have to want to come to a reptile zoo, which they do. Yeah. We're, we're always, you know, packed and stuff like that. But when you really think about 10 times that people want to go to an aquarium, then they want to go to a reptile zoo. So if I can bring 10 times the number in to the aquarium and then expose them to reptiles while they're at the aquarium, that's smart. it becomes amazing. Sure. So, so that's kind of my thought is that. Let's provide a full circle experience. Exactly. To You'll come in, like you're going to see reptiles, you're going to see mammals, you're going to see fish, you're going to have all these experiences and, and, and i think it's going to be a very unique place because you know although the reptarium is very unique now you know there's really no other reptile zoos where you can handle almost every animal in the zoo we're going to have that experience so we're going to try to take that same mentality towards fish nice. right yeah and, and so you can do things like huge. swimming with stingrays <laughs> you can feed stingrays you can feed sharks you can That's feed so cool. pr predator fish you know koi you know you know, like, you know we, we want people's hands to be wet from the time they walk in the aquarium till the time they leave the aquarium <laughs> get all pruny and, yeah, and, and we want that, so uh, so it's going to be really amazing, and it's a big undertaking, it's crazy. Sometimes I think, what am I thinking, you know, why, why would I do something so stupid? But it's also um, admirable, you yeah. know, I mean, a lot of people think about these things and they daydream, like, what could I do and stuff like that, but it's only just sticks, it's an idea that only sticks in their head, you know, yeah. I mean, you're putting just your boots on the ground, you know, I, I mean, that's say, crazy. You know, I always say that a vision without action is just a dream, Absolutely. and I'm not a dreamer, I'm always a guy, and, and I'll do things that sometimes don't work out, but I'll do them. Yep. You know, if I have an idea, I go and I try to follow it through. And, and in the end, I just want to create an experience that is so unique and so amazing, not only to Southeast Michigan, but hopefully to the entire country. And that's what we're going to do. And it's going to be a wild ride the next seven, eight months. But at the end of that, it's going to be absolutely amazing. Well, hey, I'm looking forward to it. When did you say the potential date is? Right now, year? I'm marking October 8th, 2023 okay. is the open date. And uh, I am going to do, come hell or high water, I'm going to try to hit that date. <laughs> Got a lot of work ahead of you. But yeah. hey, I mean, seeing how this zoo came about, I mean, I think you can pull it off. We'll, we'll do it. I don't have to sleep. I'm going to do it. I'm going to get it done, man. <laughs> well, right. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Brian. Yeah, I thanks, truly man. appreciate this. Yeah. We're definitely going to just go tour around the zoo really quick right now just to soak all this in because there's a lot to see, like Brian said. But really appreciate this. Yeah. And however I can help with this zoo expansion anything like that i'm here to do it i so. appreciate you brother awesome thank Thanks. you so much brian definitely it. check him out like i said guys definitely go check out his vlog channel brian barcheck as well as the reptarium as well too if you guys are in town definitely check it out as well as if you guys are out of town i mean he's got a whole experience i mean even as an aquarium house that you guys yeah. can stay out you can rent it out and stuff like that too super cool stuff i'm about to go check that out as well but thank you guys so much again for watching if you guys could do us a few favors definitely check out brian's stuff as well as if you could check out my stuff and subscribe down below as well as hit that notification bell i would greatly appreciate it as well as definitely check us out on our social medias as well too thank you guys so much again for watching and until next time we will see you guys soon take care all right a man that needs <laughs>